Demos yeah, was, yeah, that is correct. And David was able to start the recording, so that's a great start. Yep, yep. I had to rejoin different tenets. All these tenets <clears throat> are like time zones now. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> what what <laughs> tenet are you in? I'm three hours behind in my tenet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Let me figure this out real quick. There we go. That was your keyboard? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was actually just dream deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounded pretty horrible. Okay, yeah. we're hitting the hour. <laughs> we are. We Gary, whenever going. you are ready, take it away. Let's take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, today is the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework Bi-Weekly Sync. It is October the 3rd. And my name is Gary Trinder. I will be your host today. I work at Microsoft. I'm a cloud developer advocate focused on Microsoft 365 and uh, Microsoft Copilot. Okay, agenda for today. As usual, we've got the latest update on the SharePoint framework. Uh, we have a roundup of all the updates from the community projects. Uh, we'll get together and have the uh, picture time. And today we have three demos. Um, so first we have uh, Matthias and Fabian who are going to be uh, talking about SharePoint framework. And then we have Henry uh, talking about uh, the center of excellence in Viva Connections and uh, following uh, those demos with Amory, who's going to be talking uh, about um, displaying documents uh, in PyChart uh, in Viva Connections as well. So lots of SharePoint framework in Viva Connections, which is great. Um, if you are new to the uh, community, we've got a ton of resources available uh, for you. We have videos, we've got places for discussions, open source projects, uh, sample projects as well. Um, tons of content for you to uh get involved in, either contribute or use. Um, you can get to all these resources if you go through uh, the one link that to remember, aka.ms slash community slash home. And we do have other community calls as well alongside this call. We have a weekly uh, call. We have Thursday calls as well, covering everything from Microsoft 365 to Power Platform, Office add-ins, as well as this call, Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework. If you want to get all the details about all the calls on offer, go to aka.ms slash community slash calls, where you'll find all of the invites uh, and links to join uh, these community calls as well. Speaking of which, the next Microsoft 365 and Power Platform weekly call uh, is the 8th of October. We're going to have two demos. Uh, so Sebastian Levitt is going to be talking about declarative agents in Microsoft 365 Copilot. And Mark Windle is going to be giving an update on the latest features uh, from SharePoint Embedded. Um, if you're interested in presenting on these calls as well, we absolutely welcome you to come along and talk. Uh, if you're interested and want to book on uh, to one of these calls, go to aka.ms slash community slash request slash demo. You'll find form, fill out the form. We'll get in touch with you, get you booked on and present on one of these calls. Um, David, over to you. Yes, thank you, Gary. Well, friends, uh, sharing is caring is alive and well. We just had a session on Monday. And if you're thinking, what is sharing is caring? Well, guess what? It is something that is going to provide you hands-on guidance for getting more involved in the community. That means that we are going to join live Teams calls together. They are not recorded, which means they are safe space opportunities to ask any and all questions you want. And they are your gateway to contributing, to learning how to use the different contributions. So we're getting that next date set up here to mid to late October for those sample contributor sessions. We already have seen contributors have happening from the Monday session, which is awesome. So thank you and congratulations. It is absolutely free of charge. Keep an eye at aka.ms slash sharing is caring for the next dates. And we'll tweet out when we get it scheduled. So don't hesitate. Keep an eye on those LinkedIn groups and the Twitters and all those good socials places. Now, once you do contribute, we want to recognize you for the amazing work that you're doing. 
And that is where our community recognition program comes in. It's 100% free. It is absolutely open to each and every one of you. Uh, it is got new badges. So just in our rear view mirrors, Prompt Timber, but right in front of us, Prompt Tober, Hacktober, all these new cool badges for prompts and co-pilot opportunities, which is fantastic. We've also got our Refresh Rangers, which we'll talk about here in a minute. We've got our SPFX Toolkit, new badges coming. We've got ones that are coming back. So things like the Season of Getting and the Slice of Samples, those will all be back 100% free for you to join aka.ms slash community slash recognition. We do need you to opt in. Only got to do it once. And then, as I mentioned, Refresh Rangers. So it's a month-long celebration of all things open source. Adam will reference this as well. But if you would like to help update and upgrade some of our existing samples, we are going to celebrate you and recognize you. So it's awesome. It's absolutely free. And we're going to be doing that for different repos throughout the year. We're starting with some of those SPFX ones. So keep an eye out. Gary, back to you. Thanks, David. Okay, uh, now let's hear about the latest on the SharePoint framework. Face over to you. Cool, quick updates in here. I'm going to be super fast. We're uh, short on time today because of the three demos. Monthly active users are growing rapidly. It's really cool to see that we are growing after seven years going uh, GA. Um, it's been an insane start for the August related on uh, intranet uh, extensibility and teams and, and Viva Connection customization with SPFX. Let's go to the following slide. Um, Quickly recapping 120 G8 last week on 26th of September. Uh, almost feels like already ages ago, but time flies when you're having fun. So it was last week. So let's go to the final 120 is the latest. Let's go to the following slide. Uh, quickly recapping 120 GA features. The main features are in the Viva Connection side, so the data visualization components, uh, which I think uh, Amory was actually showing something related on this one today, uh, and then HTML powered quick view. Um, let's go to the following slide. Um, and this is the updated roadmap, which I updated earlier today. So 120 is now the, the latest version. Uh, it is addressing, for example, some of the nasty web back issues, which were part of the 1.19, like the object to object. If you, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, the object to object exception, you are happy that it's actually now fixed. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking, forget about it. Uh, 120, uh, no timelines for the time being. A lot of, lot of other stuff is also kind of related technologies and, and things are in the development right now. Uh, we'll get updates on all of that as we get the timelines clarifying. Following slide is just a quick teaser on, on, on something which we also showed and mentioned on Tuesday this week. Uh, we are actively working on rolling out SPFX powered ACs in Copilot, starting with a Viva Connection ACs if they're in a dashboard. Uh, they will just magically start appearing in the Copilot. So with without any extensibility, any pluggings, any cut, anything. Uh, if it's just used in a tenant, it will just start uh, showing up in the co-pilot as well, which is really, really cool. That's rolling out in public preview in Ignite timeframe, and then we're looking into the next stages after that. But that's a quick teaser on what's coming up from the engineering side, and let's move to the individual projects. Thanks, Faisa. Yep, so let's have a roundup of the community open source uh, projects. First, a Copilot prompt. So if you're using Microsoft Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot, and you've got a prompt that you use every single time, please share that with us. So uh, we have a, a library, aka.ms slash PMP hyphen prompt hyphen library, where we I encourage you to share your prompts and share them with, with others. And we do have a prompt of the week. So this prompt uh, was submitted by Ravindra. Um, and it's a prompt around summarizing most recent discussions in uh, in a Teams chat. Really useful, something you can drop in, use it over and over again, just get better answers from, uh, from Copilot. So thanks, Ravindra, for that. Okay, PMPJS. Uh, uh, Julie? I am here, but I don't have a ton to report. This is the same slide as last time. Uh, version 4.5.0 was released on September 16th. There was no... Uh, updates other than documentation and package versions. And uh, the version, the one thing I do want to point out is we did do a version three release, 3.26.0. Uh, that in, improved that alias parameter parsing that was sort of buggy, not perfect. Uh, so that is the last release of version three and version three is now officially deprecated in that we will not be doing any more releases for version three. So please do update your projects to version four. And if you uh, do see any issues or bugs or whatever, and they get uh, the PRs get merged in, you can always test them out with the V4 nightly builds. And so that's an npm install at pmp slash sp, and then at v4 nightly uh, dash dash uh, dash. It would be dash dash save. That needs to be fixed. And um, 
and that will get you that nightly build to test. And that is all I have. So back to you, Gary. Thanks, Julie. Uh, okay, CLI for Microsoft 365, so a new release. Uh, so this is uh, v9.1. Um, so we've got new commands for uh, moving files, um, uh, deleting uh, flows uh, in SharePoint Online, managing uh, sharing links from folders, as well as managing site uh, collection admin um, users, and also setting the uh, site sharing uh, permissions for SharePoint Premium as well. So if you're using that, you can now get the URL, uh, URLs of the content centers. And if you have Viva Engage, uh, then you can uh, easily list out all the communities, as well as Microsoft Teams. If you've got meetings, you can now download a meeting transcript for a specific uh, meeting. So you can get uh, the uh, latest version 9.1 from NPM. Um, you can also use this in Docker as well if you don't want to in install it. Um, but I will let you know that version 10 is coming uh, soon. So this will introduce some breaking changes. Best place to look at all of the uh, recent updates in this version and the next. Uh, so get a, a sneak peek at these uh, breaking changes is to go to our release notes, aka.ms slash CLI hyphen M365 slash notes. If you're using um, CLI, you want to ask questions, uh, you want to see what other people are doing with the CLI, uh, the best place to ask those questions uh, and to uh, uh, to collaborate with us um, around the CLI is to join our Discord server, aka.ms slash CLI hyphen M365 slash Discord is our invite uh, link. Um, moving on, so there's been a new release of Dev Proxy. So this is 0.21. So in this release, uh, we've uh, added a functionality to uh, simulate Azure Function uh, authentication. So say you're using Easy Auth, uh, which is um, you know you're using the service in Azure, and you want to replicate that locally and do full end-to-end -end testing. Um, you can use Dev Proxy to simulate that now. Um, We've also released a new command that allows you to generate um, uh, JSON web tokens as well to use those for local testing. So we think that's really going to be uh, useful. And our toolkit, our Visual Studio Code extension, has now been updated to support controlling Dev Proxy through Visual Studio Code. So you can do things like start and stopping recording and so on. Um, so really interested to see your feedback on that. If that interests you, please take a look. Go to aka.ms slash dev proxy. And we've got some new updates coming around detecting minimal permissions for any API. We've done this for the Graph API, um, but we're going to open this up and just general improvements to uh, our logging and also uh, introduce some pre-releases for our Dev Proxy toolkit. Okay, moving on, uh, Alex. Yep, thank you. Uh, so not too much to report here. We are still on 319 for React controls and 318 for uh, property controls. Uh, probably in the next uh, couple of weeks, we will update those to support uh, 120, SPFX 120. Uh, but yeah, nothing to report right now. And as usual, thank you to all our contributors who are making these releases uh, happen and useful for all of you guys. Thank you. Back to you, Gary. Thanks, Alex. Uh, moving on to Adam. Sure. Hi everybody, so we just had a new minor release, 3.4.1, and this release is jam-packed with awesome improvements. One that really stands out is the support for SPFX 1.20, so the latest version of SPFX, so the validation, the upgrade commands now, uh, and scaffolding new project will now go with this version. So if you are participating in the refresh rangers and doing those issues, this is also an awesome tool to use to help you out, out significantly. We have a new badge, and Finally, we can reward those awesome contributions to this tooling. So if you already contributed to this uh, repository, be on the lookout for those badges. And if you plan to, then you're going to get a reward for that as well. And among, we added some more improvements in how we treat errors. Uh, and when starting our extension, we added more guidance for the God tasks, the dedicated walkthrough step for that, new way to sign in, and uh, many, many more. And now we are... Uh, progressing for the v4.2 where we will introduce new features in our co-pilot assistant so be on the lookout for this okay happy if you are doing any kind of spfx development this is the tooling you should be using happy coding everybody and back to you gary thanks adam um david 
Yes, absolutely. So Hugo could not uh, be with us today, but he is processing samples and we love new samples. So please don't hesitate to submit some more, some more samples. Again, uh, Adam had mentioned those SPFX upgrade opportunities. Those are all wonderful and they're part of the web parts and extensions. So let's get involved, everybody. And moving on to ACES, Derek. All right. So we don't have any new samples, but with 1.20 coming out, we have a lot more opportunities for data visualization samples. So please, if you're uh, if you're messing around with those, please submit those as samples and we will get to those as soon as we can. OK, thank you. And now on to picture time. Yes, it is picture time. So get those cameras turned on and I will share my screen so that everybody can see everybody. There we go. We'll make this quick. Already got Camtasia ready. All right, things are looking good. See Vesa, I see Derek, looking good, looking good. A couple more seats, I see Zhao, looking great. Just a little bit more. Still some, all, plenty of room up front, everybody. Oh, we just lost someone up front. Oh no. Come back, come back. There's plenty of room up front. All right, there we go. Let's kick this off. Three, two, one. Ah, looking good, everybody. Great to see you. Fantastic smiles. All right. Doing some dance in there. Excellent. Great to see you all. Thank you for being here. Bess is showing us how it's done. Looks great. Looks great. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Gary, back to you. Fantastic. Right. On to our stars of today. We have three demos. Uh, we're doing well for time. Um, first up, we have Matthias and Fabian building real world intranet with SharePoint Framework. Uh, take it away. Okay, let me just share my screen. Okay, so hello through. everyone. Uh, my name is Matthias Burgi. I'm a DevOps engineer at La Mobilière. Hello everyone, my name is Fabian Hutzli and I'm also a DevOps engineer at La Mobilière by day, tech contest by night, and somewhere in between I try to automate everything in my life, including my coffee breaks. So we both work at La Mobilière, uh, which is founded or was founded in Bern in 1826 and is the oldest private insurance company in Switzerland. It is still organized as a cooperative. We are around 6,000 employees. 600 of those are working in the IT department. So, but let's talk about uh, automating our uh, builds and deployments uh, for SharePoint. Uh, in the, in the last community calls, my colleague Nello showed a few solutions in our Punta Bello uh, internet showcase. And Nello's solutions are really great, but each and every one of them has some different requirements for deploying to SharePoint. The multilingual document cards require some additional fields in the document library, user apps, solution needs two lists with custom permission and so on and so on. And we need to make sure that exactly the same configuration that was tested on our test tenant is then later on deployed to production. So we set out to create our um, Punto Bello installer, which is a set of tools and scripts uh, to deploy our solutions in a, in a standardized way so that we can deploy the solutions like consistently and uh, in a repeatable manner. Um, so the implementation that we did for this uh, Punto Bello installer consists basically of three parts. We will demonstrate them in a minute. Uh, at the core is, is a, a Docker image containing all the required tools and the required versions. And by the way, uh, we support both AMD and ARM processor architecture, mainly because Fabian insists on working on a Mac. <clears throat> uh, and on top of that is a set of scripts that we, that we uh, wrote for deploying, building the solutions and provision all the SharePoint sites and templates and so on. And, and one target was also that you know, that the installer could be used in different scenarios, whether locally in a dev container or even as a CI, uh, in a CI CD pipeline. So uh, uh, Fabio will show you how that looks. Thank you, Matthias. I'm taking over the screen and sharing my Visual Studio code. So in my Visual Studio code, I already loaded the uh, Pontebello user apps. Um, 
Nello did a presentation about uh, our solutions in the last uh, community call, so you already know that one and maybe other multilingual one. Um, in here we have um, two uh, SPFX solutions, one extension and one web part, and we already included the Puntobello installer, which is a separate um, GitHub project as a dev container uh, in here, in this project with the uh, Git submodule logic. And in this, we have uh, three parts. One part is the script folder, which includes all the scripts that we need for deploy a SharePoint artifact, so, such as lists and sites and all the SPFX solutions. Then we have uh, the Docker file that uh, Matthias already mentioned, and we also have the dev container configuration. Before you can use the installer, you have to uh, configuration. You have to configure all the related settings that you need for the for the installer um, in the config uh, PSM one. That's a PowerShell module, and here we have um, the logging uh, preferences. So you can choose if you want to see anything or nothing in the in the terminal when the script are running. Then we have a, a node module. Uh, node environment variable that you can set to development, pre prod prod what you like. Then you have the tenant name. For our purposes in the demos, we use the Puntobello tenant. And then we set also an admin user, which is administrated on this tenant. Then we already included a lot of uh, PNP login methods uh, using that login selector. So if you want to use, for example, an Entra ID app registration with app secret, you have to set the app ID and the app secret in the login selector uh, for the one. And if you want to choose another, for example, an app, Entra app ID, the uh, Entra ID app registration with a certificate, you can choose the login selected to three and set the appropriate uh, settings in this configuration here. And all that thing are loaded in the in an additional module that is uh, the login PowerShell module, and this one creates the corresponding uh, PNP credential uh, variable that is then loaded to the connect PNP online command. Then we have also a Docker file that Matthias already mentioned that is um, uh, able to handle both architecture, uh, AMD and ARM. And we part this Docker file in two pieces. One piece is the installer environment, which um, installs just PowerShell um, binaries so that we can use the install installation of the binaries then for our final image. and that we don't use a lot of overhead in this image. Then our final image is a, a Marina-based image that is using uh, Node.js in version 18. And this is our final image. And in this, we install different tools that we see here as arguments. So SPFX will be installed, Yeoman, um, 365CLI, PNP, and Azure PowerShell modules. And then we copy, as I already mentioned, the PowerShell binaries from the installer environment that uh, on the top of the that is on the top of the Docker file, and then we also include uh, Terraform, Azure CLI, and last but not least, the uh, Azure Developer CLI. So you have all the tools that are really awesome from the Microsoft community, all packed in one Docker file. Then additionally, uh, that we don't run the doc file in a root context, we also create an additional user that we called node. And um, everything that the user is needed uh, to run the scripts will be then um, handled in the bottom of the Docker file. Yes, and to run the uh, Docker file in Visual Studio Code as a dev container, we also have the configuration of this Docker file that will be built by starting the dev container. You can set the argument for the architecture, so RM or AMD. Then we install additionally the Visual Studio Code extension so that you can use um, a seamless integration of Visual Studio uh, in the dev container. And we also bind some ports that are the SPFX standard ports so that you can use the Docker container also for debugging SPFX solutions. And what the scripts are doing is now showing Matthias. Okay, so um, as I said before, the goal is really to have everything in one place and we have one solution, one installer that works for all um, 
a solution that um, Nello can think of and throw at us. So what we decided is uh, for a folder structure where we have the a folder for each solution in a project and then an aptly named folder called SPO containing all the SPO uh, SharePoint online information and configuration. So at, at the very heart um, of all the deployments is a file called solution JSON, um, which uh, describes everything uh, that needs to be built or deployed and provisioned and so on. It actually, uh, yeah, it's a very simple JSON file. Um, we define all the sites where solutions are being uh, installed with some additional properties in case that we need to actually create the site. Then we have a, an array of, of solutions that uh, are to be deployed to the site. And then we define all the templates which we will then uh, deploy by using invoke PNP site template. Uh, in case there are some dependencies and one deploy, um, template needs to be installed uh, before another, uh, one can uh, define a sort order if that is required. Um, obviously, you can define multiple sites and so on. And then there's a term store section as well. Uh, so if there is a solution that needs specific terms or uh, term set, what, whatever, that could be defined in here. Now, in this example here with the uh, user apps, uh, no terms are required. Uh, furthermore, we have an asset uh, folder where we just uh, have all the uh, templates, site uh, template or page templates, list templates, and so on, uh, which are then referenced in solution JSON. Going to the dev container folder, uh, as Fabian said, that is actually a submodule uh, mapped into this uh, dev container. So a submodule uh, pointing to the uh, Pontobello installer. Uh, we have the script folder and uh, we have basically three scripts, uh, uh, build SharePoint web part, deploy sites and list and deploy SharePoint web part. Uh, you can run those three scripts and everything uh, should be up and running and working as expected. I go very quickly uh, into the scripts. So they are all very similarly um, built. We always test for, for the environment. So we, we need to know whether we are running in a Docker container or not. Uh, importing the config PSMA, uh, PSM1, which showed the um, Fabian before uh, with a lot of environment variables and so on. And then we just parse the solution JSON. We look for the solutions in the file. Uh, we make sure that we don't have any duplicate solutions in there. And then we switch to the corresponding folder, run an NPM install, build uh, the solution. And that's basically it. Uh, same for deploy sites and list. Are we in a Docker, yes or no? Importing all required uh, functions and then uh, first checking if there are terms to be uh, configured, doing that, and then looking for uh, for sites defined in the solution JSON. We have a small function which uh, asserts that a site collection does exist. If it's not there, it will be created. And then we iterate through the templates and just invoke site template one after the other to configure everything that's required. Here's maybe a little bit uh, an edge case for site pages because uh, uh, invoke PNP template doesn't really uh, play well with site pages. So we, we have to add the uh, fields which are required in the solution uh, manually. So we have to find a, a separate function for that. So last but not least, deploy the web part. Again, here, same story. Um, what we do now in our case is we first um, read again the solutions and uh, publish them to the TNT app catalog. And then in a the second step, we connect to all the sites defined uh, again in the solution JSON and uh, check whether the app is already installed. If it's there, we make an update PNP app. If it's not there, we install it. And that's basically it. Um, so yeah, that's all the magic for um, basically automate, um, to, yeah, deploy in a consistent and uh, automatic way. Uh, Fabian, I give back to you maybe to demonstrate how you use this installation. Yes. Thank you, Matthias. I'm back uh, in my Visual Studio code and I'm open up the terminal. Um, I'm already in the dev container, so um, for the demo effects and timeboxing purposes, I 
do not run every script separately. So I did it already before. So uh, we showing up just the end results of the script. So we have here the deploy inside script that deploys the site templates to this site here, and the other side do not have any site templates. So there is no um, green marked commentar that is um, that's deployed anything there or nothing there. Then we have the, the build the SPVP script. That is the stuff that you already know if you're working with SPFX. So we have uh, two solutions. The solution one is built here, and the second one should up here here right and then we have also the deploy script for the for the solutions uh, we deploy that to the to the tenant app catalog and then as uh, deploy that as configured in the solution JSON file to the pp config pp home and pp content site so as matthias already mentioned that uh, when I run the script, the, the, the solutions were already installed, so they were um, just updated with the script. Then you are also able to run the whole stuff in Docker Native. I built it the same Docker file that you use for the dev container um, with Docker build command, and then I run the same script natively with the docker run command so you see that's your docker run command and then i run the powershell command with a specific script that i want to run and you see the end result is the same that i showed you before in the dev container same for the build spvp script and same for the deploy spvp script and same the is also working natively on my MacBook. I installed PowerShell and the PowerShell modules and Node directly on my MacBook, and the same scripts are also running very well here. And for fun purposes, we all already created a mini pipeline in GitHub Actions with the docker build command to build up the docker file and run everything uh, with authentication directly in GitHub Actions. So I go back to the slides. This is the last slide. Uh, the resources will be posted in the chat, I think. Uh, we have a solution on GitHub, the Buntabella installer. We have already a blog post on buntabella.ch uh, describing everything that we presented. And if you have any questions, feel free to connect with us. And thank you for your attention. Any questions? Oh. Awesome, great demo. Uh, congratulations as well, first time uh, presenters on this call. Uh, great to have you uh, with us. Likewise, if any questions, drop them in the chat, contact either Fabian or uh, Matthias directly, and I'm sure they'll be happy to, to answer them. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's move to our next demo. Uh, Henry is gonna talk about uh, introduction uh, to the M365 Center of Excellence in Viva Connections. Henry, take it away. Very good, thank you very much. Gary. Um, so my name is Hen my name is Henry Arm. Basically, I just want to show a bit of a garbage project um, that I've been working on with Greg. I think Greg, you're on the call. If you are, just maybe say hi in the chat um, briefly. But basically, uh, we had this idea that there are so many different co-pilot resources. Even just 10 minutes ago, I learned about this cool prompt GitHub repo that Gary had shown. So um, with all of these resources, it can be a bit confusing just um, to keep track of every single one of them. Some are you know, geared towards helping you with training, some are cool prompts, milestones that Copilot is achieving. So the idea is, could we not create a kind of centralized dashboard where all of these resources are aggregated into one place? So that's pretty much what we've done, uh, what we've set out to do. So we've made a dashboard that you can install with one one simple CLI takes about five minutes and it combines all of the different resources into a Viva Connections dashboard or just a regular SharePoint page. So you don't need a, an actual Copilot license yet in order to be able to use that. And like I've said, basically it just combines things like the roadmaps, other resources, workshops. I'd be happy to extend it. So if you have any suggestions, what should be on a dashboard like this in your opinion, for example, um, those cool prompts that we've seen earlier, then you know, drop them in the chat. Um, speaking of the chat, I'll also drop the link to the GitHub repository, which I'll show in just a second um, in there. And yeah, the idea is if you have that, it just makes it easier for yourself or other people on your team to learn 
what's new, what's changing, what's happening with Copilot, because it is changing every day. So having one dashboard basically helps to keep track of all of that. Um, so just to basically shortcut, um, I'm not going to show all the slides, instead focus on how to actually, um, what you're actually getting um, out of the box here. So basically that's the finished product. Uh, I'm here in a Vivo Connections dashboard and my CLI, which I'll show in a minute, has already installed all of the different cards here. So you get, for example, the customer hub that shows you sort of sessions that Microsoft offer. It shows you the Copilot blog. So that's just, um, you know, all of the recent announcements from the Copilot blog. So there's all of these different things like the Copilot scenarios that could just be a quick reference. If you're speaking to, you know, a colleague and you'd like to maybe point that colleague in like the right direction, what the legal department might do with Copilot, then you can just click it really conveniently. Um, you have Viva Learning resources um, that could be of interest to your users. So there's really a few things in here that um, could be, for example, the roadmap, really important to keep track of. These work right out of the box, so there's not much you need to do with most of them. But as you'll see, there's also some cards in here that um, you could further have configured or modify um, as you wish. So to basically show how that installation process works, I'm just going to share my remote desktop here. So I hope that's coming through. Basically, this is the URL you'll, you'll navigate to, or you just go back in the recording to the QR code, or I'll drop the URL after my segment into chat. And it's basically just a GitHub repository. It kind of explains the same things I've been explaining to you now. So different cards that are included in here. It also will tell you which cards work out of the box. Um, so some cards, um, you know, let's say as an example, the um, the early adopters card. Well, that's actually a Viva Engage um, community template that needs applied here. So that card would need configured after your installation. Uh, same with Teams Premium, that's more a suggestion. Um, so if you want that, you can uh, reach out to me and then we'll talk about how to configure it. But if that isn't exactly what you want from your dashboard, then you, know, you can just uh, go ahead and delete that. But anyways, you are here in this GitHub repository and to install it, basically all, all we will do is download the zip archive. So it's a very simple command line interface that we're downloading here. I just click here um, to download the latest version and that's downloading. And then all I have to do is basically extract that. And then I get an exe file. Um, so in here is also a JSON that defines all of the different cards. You get a SharePoint package that installs that is used to basically create these cards. But you just run this as an administrator. So I'm going to say yes. And then you have a choice whether you want to install this dashboard as a Vivo Connections dashboard, like I've shown, or there's also the choice to do it as a regular SharePoint page. Perhaps you don't want to mess up the one Vivo Connections experience that you guys have in your organization. So if that's the case, SharePoint is like a good alternate and I'm going to show that. So basically, I just pick a page that I want to target here and copy that link. And then I go back to my command line interface and then say I want to install it as a SharePoint page. Then it's asking me for that URL where it's going to add that as an extra page. So it's not going to override anything. And I just put that in here. I wanted to install in the sales and marketing site. So I click uh, OK. Now I need to log in um, just so the CLI can actually log on to your SharePoint. So you will need to be a global administrator for this. Um, and it's just asking you, are you a global administrator? And you're going to say, yes, I have that permission. And then it's going to basically install this um, page. This will take about a minute. Um, so I hope I can think of enough things to say um, in the meantime. Um, for example, what are other things you could be doing as this is installing? Once you have this installed, 
for example, there's also a built-in adaptive card designer. That's obviously an open source designer uh, from Microsoft um, that you could, for example, then modify and tweak those cards with. So I'll hopefully we'll be able to show that um, as well. Check in the time. Yes, I think I will. So just waiting for that to run its course. Really didn't um, time the installation very well. I think it might be paused as well. It's got the select on. I don't know if you need to yeah, hit escape. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. I could have waited a long time here. Um, <laughs> so the dashboard's ready. It's giving me the link where I need to go. Um, so I'm just going to copy that across, copy that into my browser here, and then that will take me to my new page. Next steps yet. And yeah, basically this page consists of a plethora of web parts which um, contain all of those lovely resources that I have um, pointed out to you. For example, different prompts, uh, updates from the Copilot blog, uh, updates from the Microsoft 365 roadmap, um, a glossary of AI related terms uh, or Copilot related terms that is of interest. Um, those different scenarios um, and you can basically make with this what you want. Um, so if you like how this looks, then there's nothing for you to do, but you can very easily just go ahead and edit one of um, one of the existing web parts here. So just um, basically you, you select, let's say this one, edit the web part. That then edits um, allows you to edit it in a designer. So if you open that, you get basically a version of Microsoft's um, Adaptive Cards Designer, and you can just make some changes in here. Say you want this um, to be a different color um, and maybe really large. And then, uh, you know, I'm not going to explain. It's mostly low code, but obviously you can spend a whole evening in here. But if you then change something, then your web part. I kind of messed it up with the color here, but then the web part updates what you've done, just done in the designer. And yeah, basically that's how simple it is. Uh, you just go to GitHub, download that zip archive, um, and then let me just go back to my uh, full screen presentation for a sec for a second. Um, so that that would be something you would be able to do. Um, you can also make your own cards with this. So if you have any kind of idea like digital signage or you know, some other resource that your organization might want to show uh, on its Copilot dashboard, then you could do that. And yeah, basically the idea is that if you've deployed this, um, you just, you know, highlight all the different resources in one key place that would be useful for yourself, that could be useful for other people on your team. And then it's just easier to find all of those um, updates and resources. And if you also create your own cards, you get the benefit that you could, you know, better leverage your existing Microsoft investment. You could add cards that tap it to Microsoft Graph um, data. So if you want to project that on your dashboard, then you could do that also. Um, otherwise, um, if you have any questions, uh, I'm a little, no, I'm actually right on time. So if it's one question, I, we can be quick. If not, I'll try and take a few things um, over chat for until the rest of the call. Thank you very much. Awesome demo, Henry. Fantastic. Great solution. Really, really like that for adoption of, of Copilot. It's, uh, brilliant uh, bringing Thanks. out all those resources together. Um, I, again, yeah, thank you for coming on this call. I get first time uh, presenter as well. Uh, again, so if anyone is sat here thinking, you know what, I'd like to do this as well. I'd like to uh, present just like Henry and uh, Matthias and Fabian have done today. Uh, reminder that you can submit that form and um, get your submission entry in and we'll get you booked on this call. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so moving on to our final uh, demo.
uh, Amory is going to show us something that uh, Vesa uh, quickly showed us earlier, the new pie chart option in Viva Connections. Amory, over to you. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Gary. Uh, can you hear me fine? Perfect. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. Just let me know if you can see my screen. Yep, looks great. Yep, perfect. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Emery Thomas. I'm a modern workplace consultant at Avanad. And I'm also a MVP for M365 development and SharePoint. And today I'm going to show you a sample that is displaying documents by content type using the new uh, pie chart option for ACs in Viva Connections. So I, I built this sample because I, I think this is a, a good example of how to use the new data, new data visualization card uh, options for Viva Connection. And basically what it does, it displays a pie chart showing documents of a selected document library by content type. And you have the option to select the source library that you want from the property pane uh, of the adaptive card extension. So before moving on to the demo part, uh, just a quick um, overview of the data visualization card template uh, with SharePoint Framework. So it was first introduced with uh, version 1.19. But we only had a line chart card layout. And then with the SharePoint Framework version 1.20, which has been generally available for a few days now, I think, uh, we have three more new uh, data visualization options, which are the bar chart, the donut chart, and the, the chart that we are going to, to see today, the pie chart. So let's move on to the demo. Uh, yes, so as you can see here on my home, I have nothing, but I'm going to add my card to the dashboard. So for now, it is empty. So I will open the property pane. And here, I need to enter the site address where my source library is, and then enter the title of my library. And for this demo, I'm going to use uh, the PNP project library, which has uh, a lot of documents. Some of them are high level design. We also have low level design and some business requirements documents. So first, I'm going to copy site address. I'm going to paste here. And the title of my library that I'm going to paste, paste here and then publish my dashboard page. And yes, so as you can see here, I have um, so three different sections because I have three different um, content types on my library. And I can see that I have 45% of low level design, 32% of high level design, and finally 23% of um, business requirements documents. And it should be available on the Viva Home as well. If I refresh a few times, let's try one more time, but it's basically the same view. Yes, I have, I have it here. Pretty simple feature, but uh, yes, it's a nice way to have a graphic view of data in the in the Viva Connection dashboard. So let's move back to the slide for some code. So 
So to begin with, uh, if you want to to use uh, this card template, uh, make sure to to use the latest version of the SharePoint framework uh, to to build your project and select the data visualization card template. And actually, here it's not uh, the latest version; it was a 1.20 beta version, but 1.20 should be the same. So the first thing that uh, I want to do is to retrieve the data that I want to to display uh, on my pie chart, pie chart. So I'm going to do that using the Graph API uh, to retrieve all the files of my library. And for this sample, um, I, I won't need the title of the documents or the type of the documents. I only want to select the content type uh, of the documents that I'm retrieving. Once I uh, once I have my let's say raw data, I want to format it uh, to um, bind it uh, with my pie chart. So to do that, uh, the first thing that I want to have um, is a uh, a list of content type uh, names, but without any duplicates. So this is what I'm going to do uh, with this new set. And then for each uh, of this content type name, I want to have the number of uh, associated documents. And uh, to do that, I'm going to build uh, a new array, uh, which is going to be uh, an array of pi data point. So if we focus on what is a pi data point, so we have the X property, which is uh, going to be the name of the content type. The Y property, which is going to be the, the number of documents associated to this, to this content type, sorry. And we also have the color and the show label uh, properties that I won't use uh, on this sample, but basically you can choose uh, the color that's going to be used um, by the pie chart. And you can also choose to display or not uh, the, the label uh, of the content type in this, uh, in this sample on the pie chart. And for the label, if you don't um, put any value for this property, the labels will be displayed by default. So once uh, I have formatted my data, I can uh, move on to the to the card view uh, to display my, my pie chart. So on the pie chart view, card view, um, I can define the uh, visualization, visualization kind that I want. Here I want a pie chart. And then on the series parameter, I'm going to bind the, the pie data point uh, array that I built earlier. So that's pretty much it, uh, but to go a bit further, so it's not part of the sample, but um, you can notice here the property is the net, which is set as, as false. But if you set uh, this parameter as true, uh, it will automatically switch uh, to a donut chart without any further configuration, which is showing the same data plus you also have the total number of documents you have on your uh, library. And finally, if you want to add more information on your, on your card, you can also add some header and footer uh, on, your, um, on, your, on your chart card. Uh, for instance, here I'm having the title of my library and a button to open the, the quick view of my card. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have a bit more time, so if you have any question, feel free to, to ask. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Amory. Great demo uh, showing the the new features. Um, really cool. It's going to be really useful. Um, everything visual on the dashboard is going to make it much more interesting. Um, so interesting to see uh, what others do with this sample as well, um, which you've uh, already uh, published, which is fantastic. Um, yes, we are good for time. We've got a few minutes uh, left. Uh, let's just go back to the slides. Oops. That's what those. Um, okay. Yeah. So if you have any feedback about these calls, um, things that we're covering, things that we might not be covering that you might be interested in as well, let us know um, so that we can, you know, provide the content that is going to be most useful to you. So uh, if you uh, have some feedback, you can give that at aka.ms slash community slash calls slash feedback. You'll get the form there. Um, we'd be really happy for you to uh, to share that, that feedback uh, with us. Um, just a, a reminder as well, we have an official Discord server for the community. So here's where you can connect with others. You can learn and collaborate on different open source projects as well. You know, ask questions. Maybe you're using something. Maybe you've seen something on today's uh, community call. You don't quite know where to get started. This is the best place to ask those questions. And you know, the community is incredibly helpful and they will do their best uh, to, uh, to help answer your questions. Um, so to join this Discord, server you can use the invite link at aka.ms slash community slash discord or use the qr code uh, that's on your screen now and it's an ever-increasing uh, uh, community as well so we've got over 2200 members and growing uh, so there'll definitely be someone in there who can answer your question if you go along and ask um, and thank you for attending today's call thank you to our speakers as well the recording of this call will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft Community Learning YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the uh, the channel, um, go to aka.ms slash community slash YouTube, hit that subscribe button. You'll get the notifications of when this recording is available, but also the individual demos as well of all the other calls that uh, have taken place that are published um, periodically as well. So there's always new content appearing Appearing on that that YouTube channel. If you want to uh, follow us on Twitter or X, really should get outdated. Um, so there's two accounts that you can follow: Microsoft 365 Dev account and M365 uh, PNP account. As well, you'll get all the latest updates um, around the community uh, and Microsoft 365 Dev. Uh, from those accounts. The next Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework call will be on October the 17th. And the next community call, which will be the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform call, uh, is on <laughs> brilliant live editing. I love it. <laughs> we need formally Twitter, right? We need to have that in there. Um, the next call is October the 10th. And as just as a reminder, the uh, all of the invites schedules for all of the community calls um, are available from aka.ms slash community slash calls. And with that... I'd like to say thank you again. Um, hope you have a good uh, rest of your day, evening, morning, wherever you are. Have a good one. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Hey, that co-pilot's amazing. Just listen to Gary and made changes. <laughs>